solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I am about to enter, so help me God. And so it starts with the simplest and yet the most meaningful of ceremonies, the story of Tom Halliday, Special Agent, Federal Bureau of Investigation. Briefcase, revolver, and coveted badge. These are symbols of a new trust, a new responsibility. And Tom Halliday must learn to carry them with the respect and honor that is an FBI tradition. A bus ride is the beginning, a trip south from Washington to the U.S. Marine Corps base at Quantico, Virginia. This college-like building is the FBI Academy, the place where Tom and his classmates will both live and learn during most of the 13 weeks of training that lie ahead. It will be for Tom like going back to school, sharing a room with three other agents in training. Keeping personal possessions, no matter how valuable, in lockers that need never be locked, and finding out day by day the meaning of teamwork and its importance in the FBI. This is a time of sacrifice for Tom Halliday, sacrifice that will continue through his years of service. He knows it, accepts it, and so too does his family. Taking up his FBI handbook, Tom is ready for the lectures and book learning that are fundamental in his training. In the weeks to come, the Academy's work and study program will fill his days from 7 in the morning until 11 at night. In class, Tom is carefully instructed on the jurisdiction of the FBI, what violations it investigates, when, where, how, and why. Crimes such as bank robbery, Kidnapping. Extortion. And from actual FBI films, espionage. This is Frederick Duquesne, pre-World War II German spy, pulling stolen documents from his sock, bragging about outsmarting the FBI, and then passing his top secret papers to an undercover agent for the FBI. Prison was the payoff for master spy Frederick Duquesne. So it goes for the first weeks at Quantico, absorbing, recording, studying, remembering, until one day the agents return to FBI headquarters and the laboratory, a place of challenging problems such as restoring and reading charred documents. Agents in training learn firsthand how burned paper can be pieced together, pressed between glass plates, and photographed by a special camera in the laboratory. Here the note is mounted in place. The camera uses highly sensitive infrared film to bring out the writing on the charred half. It is focused from the rear. Seen through the glass in back, the note appears upside down. With the use of this special film, a print is made and developed, which can, like this one, be read. Meet me and Sam at 10 p.m. We will hit the bank at Middletown Thursday. George. In the spectrography section, tiny paint chips scraped from a sledgehammer can incriminate and convict, or just as important, exonerate and free a criminal suspect. For the FBI adheres faithfully to the concept of justice for all. The tip of this cartridge being inserted into an electron microscope contains a residue of smoke smaller than a pinpoint. The electron microscope, many times more powerful than the ordinary microscope, can actually see through the specimen like an X-ray machine. Magnified and then photographed and enlarged, 
This is how the minute residue looks, 100,000 times its size. The fascinating science of firearms identification is acted out continuously as experts seek to match bullet with gun and gun with suspect. The FBI laboratory, the most modern of its kind in the world, illustrates dramatically how science has revolutionized criminal investigation. More than 185,000 examinations a year are conducted here. And these facilities are available not only to FBI agents, but to every state and law enforcement agency in America. And the cost to them is nothing. Just as impressive and just as important in every agent's on-the-job training is the Fingerprint Identification Division, where some 2,000 men and women work around the clock. Speed, efficiency, accuracy. They are musts in making certain that the 22,000 sets of prints received each workday are correctly recorded, cataloged, and checked against the criminal file. The fingerprint cards can not only trap criminals, but also identify amnesia victims and persons killed in disasters. Most times, however, the search is to match incoming prints with those in the wanted file. All identification is by eye, for no machine has yet been devised to classify fingerprints, every one of which is different. There are literally tens of millions of fingerprint cards on file, enough to make 100 stacks as tall as the Empire State Building, or stretched end to end, enough to extend three quarters of the way around the equator. Picking one card out of 155 million seems like looking for a needle in a haystack. And yet, so efficient is the breakdown that on special request, it can be done within a matter of minutes. When an identification of fingerprints has been confirmed and previous record located, the record is outlined in detail, updated, and run off on duplicating machines. One copy goes into the FBI files, the second is forwarded to the contributor of the prints, and additional copies are mailed to other interested agencies. All contributors are answered, whether identification is made or not. And all answers are in the mail within 24 hours. It's a big job that's getting bigger all the time. The doors of the identification division are never closed. The search never ends through fingerprints that cannot be counterfeited, disguised, or hidden. The one certain signature that each of us carries from the cradle to the grave. The Washington, D.C. field office, one of 54 such FBI offices in the United States and Puerto Rico, is next on the agent's program of learning by seeing. Here they observe the communications network that makes the FBI the most mobile crime-fighting organization in the world. Listen as an agent radios in. Unit 10 to KGB 770. Uh, this is KGB 770, Unit 10. Uh, go ahead with your message. KGB 770, the subject is south on 14th Street over F, approaching Pennsylvania Avenue in the right turn lane. Clear, 503. Tom and his fellow agents are now ready to return to Quantico to take up a new and completely different phase of their training. In the right turn lane. The gun vault at Quantico houses more than 1,900 weapons. Submachine guns, rifles, shotguns, revolvers. These fill rack after rack. They are the four basic weapons of the FBI. It is not enough to know how to fire the guns. Each special agent is also taught how they are put together and how to care for and service them. Tom must remember always the importance of the weapon that is in his hands. Again and again, the submachine gun is broken down, reassembled and broken down again, until every agent knows by heart, as his instructor does, 
the weapon's 27 principal parts. Only after intensive instruction are agents allowed on the firearm's range. Gentlemen, let's drop down to the throne position. On the line with five rounds, load and lock. The line loaded. Ready in the right, ready in the left, ready in the firing line. The sound of gunfire echoes across the range, through the day, and into the night. Training continues with grim realism in a place called Combat Village, a ghost town used by the Marines in their maneuvers. An umpire, who is himself a special agent, instructs Tom Halliday and his classmates on the equipment that can be successfully used in forcing the surrender of a criminal hiding out in Combat Village. Tom is to direct today's raid, selecting the men, assigning their equipment, and personally taking the prisoner into custody. The umpire watches with knowing eyes, for Tom will be graded on every one of his decisions and actions. While many criminals can be traced and trapped by science, there comes the time when each must be taken prisoner in person. Special Agent Tom Halliday has to be ready to get that job done. And starting now, he must act as if his life is at stake for someday it may be. Look and listen as Tom Halliday captures, disarms, and arrests his prisoner. Johnson, this is the FBI. The house is surrounded. Back out that door with your hands up. Right now. Oh, I'm coming. I'm coming. Don't shoot me. Hands way up. Back up. All right, move to your right. Right hand back. Hold it right there. Left hand. Forward. All right. Back. Okay. I'm in my hat. I'm in a hat. 
so ends our story of Tom Halliday, filmed with the cooperation of the Federal Bureau of Investigation and its director since 1924, J. Edgar Hoover. Each of the special agents of the Federal Bureau of Investigation must be ready and capable to meet any challenge. The security of our nation or the life of a loved one may depend upon him. It is imperative, therefore, that each of our special agents be thoroughly trained. The story of Tom Halliday highlights some of the intensive and rugged training which our present investigative staff of more than 6,000 special agents must undergo. Through the years, our responsibilities have continued to increase. At the present time, the FBI investigates violations of more than 160 federal statutes relating to criminal and subversive matters. I hope that this presentation will serve to give to you a better knowledge and a deeper understanding of your FBI. My associates and I are proud of our organization. Our team of dedicated, loyal men and women is ready to serve the nation and you at all times. We are as close to you as your telephone. In furtherance of our service to each citizen, we daily pledge our fidelity, bravery, and integrity.